surrendering actually is not an easy act. Because even if it appeared very, when we talk about surrendering, even if it appeared very easy, you know, what in the mind of people surrendering means? That, oh, yes, I believe in you, I listen to you. But that not surrendering. Because surrendering is an action of the whole, not part. If it is part, it's not surrender. You see, when human mind think of surrendering, they think, yes, I will live my life the way I want. And then I will put an act, I will, I will show that I'm surrendering. Of course, this doesn't happen consciously. This happens unconsciously. The action of surrendering through the mind is different. Mind understands surrendering in another way, you see, than what surrendering it is in reality. So, because you are human, you know, the first act of surrendering is outside. You have a physical body, you have a mind. So these both run toward the outside reality. So the act of surrendering firstly becomes the outer surrender, which means for any kind of surrendering, the mindset must change. If that mindset doesn't change, the act of surrender becomes difficult. Because surrender, again, I repeat, it's a very big word in itself. Don't think that when you say, yes, oh God, I'm surrendering to you, but you are surrendering really. That is just an outside act. Surrendering means you forget yourself completely. Until that doesn't happen, you have not surrendered. It's strong, huh? <laughs> it is like that. Because as long as there is even a percentage of yourself in surrendering, surrendering doesn't happen. Then it stay always an act or on the process of surrendering. So act, process, surrender. Firstly, like I said, your mindset is transformed. So for the mindset to transform, a goal must be clear. What is the goal? You're surrendering to something. Yes or no? That thing is your aim, your goal. But here, surrendering, when we look at it, to say if you go in the outside world, you will talk about surrendering. I say, yes, I'm surrendering to Swami Vishwananda. People in the mind will think, yes, you are like a slave. No? But in reality, you are a slave. It's a big word, yes. You are slave to your emotion. You are slave to your mind. You are slave to the external reality. The essence of being a human, you are a slave. And this, when you realize that, slave doesn't mean you are being beaten up, eh? but you have to carry a big stone. and then you <laughs> No. You are a slave of yourself. You know, you're a slave of your mind. So that kind of slavery damn you. That kind of slavery limit you. That kind of slavery make you more miserable. When a master tells you to surrender, that 
surrender which the master is talking about, it's also a slavery. But slavery to freedom. We are all servant of the Supreme Lord. You know, all human beings are eternal servant of Sriman Narayana. You will never be able to take his place. You know, very often people think, yes, I am God, I will be. No, you are part of God. That part is a servitude towards him. When you realize that, not all spiritual path teach you that. That's why bhakti path, Krishna praised the path of bhakti. Because that path of bhakti is not through pride or arrogance. It is through humility. So surrender happens only when there is that aspect of humbleness inside of you. When you slave into the world, how proud you are. Eh? You're in a great argumentative, uh, argumentative way. No? You like to prove yourself. You like to be heard. Yes or no? You like to argue about your ideas. But on the spiritual path, you become wise. Because in argument, it don't lead you, lead you anywhere. You know that very well. Huh? Yes or no? Probably you are expert in that, huh? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> So, in argument, you can't listen and you can't surrender. That's why I talk about the mindset being transformed. The wise one doesn't argue. Those which is wise, they utilize argument as a play. They don't go into it. Because in argument, there's a lot of emotions which uproll itself. So how? Then you have two kind of people, you know. So the people, the worldly people will tell you, argument hurt. Please, don't do any things which will hurt. Yes or no? But that kind of hurting means I, my. Whereas in a spiritual sense, The wise one will tell you, don't argue because you are hurting your own self. In reality, you are not hurting anybody, you are hurting your own self. So what is that point of surrendering into that? You see, we talk always about surrendering. You know, but that act of surrendering, like I said, you must become wise. And becoming wise means for you to truly surrender to the Master's feet, you have to forget about yourself. Because if you put yourself first, you will be in an argu argumentative aspect. Which means also towards yourself. You know, the mind will argue with you. Then surrender becomes very difficult. <laughs> so it's a process, you know, of transforming that mind. It's a process of humbling that mind. Where you don't exist. Which means you exist in your true aspect. Because you don't know who you are. No? Who are you? The Gita Bhavan Krishna asked Arjun, who are you? 
this is a big question which everybody asks. No? Who are you? Yes, people will descri describe the outside reality. People will describe what they know about themselves. I come from there, I'm the son of, or daughter of this and so and so, you know. I'm like this, I'm tall, I'm skinny, I'm fat, I'm big and whatever. You describe yourself of how, what you understand in the external things of who you are. The question still stay. Who are you still? Because that is not you. No? Why when you die, they refer to you as a body? No? There's this beautiful story in the Purana when uh, Yamaraj, the Lord of Death, came to get somebody and he saw everybody was lamenting. He was wondering why was he lamenting so much like that? And he said, okay, I will ask them the question. So he asked them a question. He said, excuse me, people. Why are you crying? Oh, he's that, he's no more, you know that. Mm -hmm. And Yamaraj looked at them and said, well, have you ever known that person? For real, you know, have you ever known that person? He said, yeah, we know him, he was a good person. Uh, Yamaraj, but that person who know, you know is still there. Is it not the same eyes that you have been looking at? Is it not the same nose, the same face? Is it not the same hand and feet? Is it not the same beautiful hair? It's the same, no? The only difference is that before he was answering you, and now he's not answering you. That's the only difference. Yes or no? Sometimes you sleep next to the person in the bed. You are, you are talking with the person. The person is already sleeping. What do you do? Hey, get up. Puff. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yes or no? <laughs> well, that doesn't happen when somebody is dead. So, coming to that point, you see. Firstly, you know, the spiritual path bring you to the state of knowing who you truly are. Not this physical body, not that mind, but the one which inhabit within, the one which energizes each part of your body. So imagine what gives you energy, what gives power to this body to, to function, what energizes each part of that body is the Atma. Without Atama, the body is nothing. No? So, Atama is very important to get to know. You are studying the Gita right now. Bhagavan Krishna continuously repeat to Arjun, know thyself, know for sure who you are. And knowing who one is, this is the purpose of life itself. And this is the whole thing of surrendering. Surrendering is not an act of slavery which the mind thinks, yeah, I'm taking shelter, I will just do whatever he said. No, 
Master doesn't have anything, you know, when bringing you to your true self. Nothing but that. That act of surrendering, meaning you immortalize yourself, being alive itself. Not limiting yourself, but awake. But awake in a reality. So, that reality, like I said, start firstly with your sadhana. That's why sadhana have been given. You know, but how much do you want to know yourself? It is also important. You know? How much you want to know the mystery what lies within you? Because, you see, why I call it a mystery? Because it doesn't unfold itself just like that. You know? Because if something just unfolds itself like that, then it is boring. So, knowing that self is not something boring. That's why it takes lives. Not one life. You can happen in one life if you have that grace. You know, Kripa is very important. So grace, grace can take you from down here and put you to the top. have to earn that grace. You're truly blessed actually to be on the path of bhakti. Because bhakti in itself is a grace. Bhakti in itself reminds you that your mind must be placed at the feet of the Lord. So in that act of putting your mind to the feet of the Lord, you are becoming like a child. You know, the child doesn't know anything. The child just knows the parents. You know? When the child lifts the hand, it's crying like crazy. Uh, take me, take me, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so automatically the parents pick up the child no? so like that God become and the path of bhakti God become the, the parent where he carry you he care for you he look after you in Bhagavad Gita Chapter 9, verse 22, Lord Krishna said, you know, those minds, those who surrender to me, I shall take care of them. I shall look after them. He is saying, not those minds which is surrender to me, I shall take care and look after them. Whatever they have, I should magnify it and care for them. So he's not saying that your point is only to give yourself into his hand. And he said, don't worry, once you have given yourself to me, I shall look after you. And this is the whole point of surrendering. Where you give willingly yourself to him. So giving oneself to him is a very scary act for the mind. The next question will be, okay, what should I change? Of course, there are certain things that you have to, to change by yourself, you know, because if you stay the same way, then that act will not happen. He don't ask you to live your life, you know. He don't ask you to let go of all your wealth. He don't ask you to stop working. He don't ask you to stop your relationship. He don't ask you for anything. 
what He asks you, only one thing. Think of me. Just that. In whatever you do, just think of me. So He's inviting you to be to, to make him part of your life. Now, he wants that relationship. You know? He wants to, to be part of your life. He said, yes, make me part of your life. I'll take care of everything for you. But that making me part of your life must be also sincere. It can't be superficial. When it is superficial, then you will get superficial things. But when it's sincere, that sincerity will amplify it, all positivity inside of you. And that act is 